Hey, I'm John. Welcome back to Mr. G's Workbench and the beginning of a new project. Hot on the heels of wrapping up the uh, 148 scale War My Hornet. Uh, I figured after a series of jets, we would do a World War II vintage plane for once, something with a propeller on it. And uh, my choice was the uh, Ravel 132nd Arado 196A3 float plane. Uh, I've had it in my stash for a couple of years. It's kind of just been staring at me. I don't have a ton of aftermarket for it, which will make it a lot less painful to build. So um, I'm actually looking forward to it. Uh, my buddy Boyd encouraged me to do this one. He did the single float version, and his looked remarkable. And uh, you know, he said, "Why don't you give it a try? You know, just to kind of simplify things a little. Should be a good build." Uh, we don't have, like I said, a ton of aftermarket. There's just a couple of things for it, one of which might be slightly challenging. And I'll give you a look at that when we uh, take a quick look at what we've got going on. And uh, before we get started, uh, usual YouTube business. Uh, I, if you're not subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll consider doing so. Uh, all you got to do is hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell and be notified every time I put out a new video. Um, I typically do one like every week or two. Uh, there's no regular schedule here, so, you know. Uh, but again, I hope you'll consider it. Uh, I've also got an Instagram. Uh, here's my Instagram handle. Uh, feel free to take a look at it. I typically publish pictures uh, on, on the gram uh, prior to putting a video out. You get kind of a sense of what's coming up. So uh, I hope you'll consider that as well. So uh, that being said, why don't we jump in and, and take a look at what we've got ahead of us here. So here we go. I, I'm sorry, I've got crap all over my desk. Uh, quick look at, at, before anything, I'll show you whatever uh, aftermarket I, I have collected. It's going to be the, uh, the Zoom set from Edward. It's just the uh, instrument panels and a couple of things for the cockpit. That's all that's in there. Uh, we've got... We've got some gun barrels from Master. Uh, they always look good and something that's going to kind of be seen pretty prominently. It's worth doing. Uh, and then I've got uh, masks from Montex. So they give you the canopy masks as well as the insignia masks. So uh, we'll use that. And last, but certainly not least, and the part I am actually looking to the least, I've got HGW fabric seat belts. Oy. Uh, it came with, a, came with a resin seat for the pilot as well as a, the bench seat for the, uh, for the gunner in the back, the gunner slash radio operator. Uh, I'm really going to try to my best to use it. And uh, spoiler alert, I've already installed the pilot seat into the, uh, into the front. Took a little bit of, uh, I had to clean it up a little, cut it off the, uh, the pour stub. Uh, like I said, it was resin as well as the, the bench seat for the back. So uh, I've got that installed and it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty presentable. Uh, the fun part's going to be getting all the belts on, but I won't be doing that until I paint this. I've got the, uh, the radios for the back compartment. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to use the Edward um, overlays for these because I'd have to file off all this raised detail and uh, I, I don't think I'm going to do that. The, this detail is actually pretty nice and I think if I can just manage to paint with a steady hand, it'll all look presentable. Moving along with getting the uh, interior parts uh, painted and, and uh, ready for assembly, I've taken, here's what I've done with this stuff. I, I want to do some chipping. I'm going to do hairspray chipping on, on some of the inside components uh, that I know are metal. I've taken, I've taken all the interior components. Uh, I've got the floor. I've got the two sides of the frame. Uh, I initially painted them Mr. Metal Color Aluminum. Number 218, MC 218. It's from Mr. Hobby. I sprayed all of that stuff with aluminum. I let it dry. 
Then I came back and using the Armor Modeler's uh, solution, we've got Tresemme Firm Control Tray 2 Spray Ultra Fine Mist. Spray all the parts with that hairspray, let that dry. The next day I came back and I painted all the interior components uh, with AK Real Colors RLM02. This is the 1941 uh, color, apparently. Uh, I'm not much of a buff on this stuff. Obviously, there's multi-year multi uh, color variations in RLM02, apparently. So, I painted that. Here we are. I'm going to let this dry for a few more minutes. Oh, and then the other major component that I painted with the aluminum and then with RLM02 was this the resin seat that came with the uh, seat belts. So we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna chip up the seat. I'm gonna chip up some of the frame and some of the floor. Any other chipping that I decide to do along the way. I use the I use the resin seat from uh, HGW belts that came with the seat belts for this uh, for this little shindig. Uh, I've I've installed the first set of paper belts here. Uh, I can tell you, I, I mean they weren't overly complicated to do, but they were a bit of a pain, and, and you got to just sit and read the instructions before you do it. So so there they are. For better or worse and as a point of information I've done what they said I, I put some uh, I put an acrylic uh, gloss over them and then I uh, hit them with I used some brown wash that I already had this enamel wash for wood which is brown so I use that to kind of get the, a little bit more color on it I suppose it makes them look a little bit more like belts so I'm relatively happy with that. Uh, on the radio uh, console back here, I wound up, I was originally just going to use the molded in detail here. Uh, then I realized like, you know what, I can I can just swipe most of this off in, in one shot with a sanding stick. I did that. I used the Edward uh, photo etch. I didn't feel like my painting was going to match up to the, the detail you were getting on this. So I went with that. Up here, this is still the molded in detail. I'm gonna add some. Uh, I'm gonna add some gauges in. I'll show you in a second. Uh, everything else here is just out of the box. It's painted RLM2, and then, like I said, I did the uh, hairspray chipping. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Here's the uh, here's the floor of the cockpit. Like I said, I went back and touched up the the chipping here to make it look a little more you know sensible and uh, I've installed the control column and painted it then I've got these the sides of the uh, the frame I've added in uh, the pieces of Edward photo etch that came with it I've installed the they have you put in the drum magazines for the machine gun so there's one there everything else I've painted uh, the colors it's supposed to be painted and I've applied a gloss coat over all of this, including the uh, the seats and the the cockpit floor, because we're going to hit it with uh, uh, an oil wash. This is the right side of the frame. I've installed the photo etch again, painted. It, they they wanted you to paint this box here brown. It didn't make much sense to me. I, th sometimes things are better left the way they are, so I just left that. Again, all this has gotten some chipping, and uh, I'm happy with that. I didn't use the Edward photo etch because it was so flat. Uh, I preferred the raised detail. Uh, again, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to use... <clears throat> I have air scale uh, decals for the gauges. I'm, it's a little disappointing that Ravel doesn't give you any instrument panel decals on the, on the decal sheet, but so be it.
So a quick recap of the fruits of my labor that you see in front of you. I started today with, uh, with all the components painted. I, uh, I installed the, the seat, the seat uh, assembly and the radio compartment are all one piece. I installed them into the floor. Uh, the instrument panel uh, I didn't install yet. After I had this installed and the control stick installed, I hit, uh, I hit the, uh, the assembly with uh, a gloss coat, uh, my ever popular uh, gauzy from uh, AK my go-to gloss coat right now until I find something better. So that that was given a coat of gloss. All the components of the cockpit were given a gloss coat. I then went in. Uh, the instrument panel is, uh, I used the kit panel. It's painted German gray with uh, the dials picked out with Tamiya flat black. Same thing up here. The radios down here were all done with the uh, Eduard photo etch. I did use it for that because I can't come up with that kind of detail. Uh, after I got uh, the painting done, then I did the gloss coat, then I installed the air scale 148 scale instrument decals into the uh, faces here and here. Uh, the 30 second scale ones were too big, so I didn't use those. Once that was done, I installed the instrument panel here. I, I put some lead wires in the back of the instruments since Ravel had already given you hollowed out uh, backs to the instruments just in case they're seen I put wires there so everything at that point got a, a coat of uh, a black wash uh, you can kind of see it here on the on the dial that gear that's next to the seat uh, the seat itself got a wash the belts uh, everything got a black wash including the instrument panels and the sides, the rivet, the rivet detail on the floor here also. Uh, so I got that done. Then I assembled the sides onto the, the cockpit assembly that I had to that point. Once the sides were in, I could install this rear piece. It has to sit with the rails underneath it on the sides. And then you, you move it back and fix it in place once it hits the, the stops here on, on both sides get that in got the made sure this was positioned properly uh, with the they give you these little tabs here so it's it's fitted properly up here it was still open at the time that all got put into the floor you could see the the sides slot into these uh, cutouts for the wings so that just drops right down on top you bring it together you add that in the next thing I did was paint and install the firewall that gets fitted to uh, their slots in the back of the firewall that the rails from each side slot into. It aligns everything the way it should be. And there's a tab on the bottom on the inside that also fit. So I got that, that firewall in. Then I installed this. Uh, this is going to be the bottom of the fuselage later on. There's eight tabs here. You, you, you just glue them all drop it down on top of that you can see everything lines up there once I had it pressed down and secured and it dried then I went back I pressed down on the firewall and and then I uh, gave a coat of Tamiya extra thin in here and the same thing on the other side and again it, it ensures that the bottom and the frame and the firewall all come together and sit properly. I mean, this is, you know, no putty, uh, no messing around with it. Everything slotted perfectly. There's no glue between the bottom of the fuselage and the back of this frame. Uh, I think you need to leave a little bit of play in there just in case. Once I had that done, I had earlier replaced the barrel of this machine gun with a, a barrel and shroud from Master. The one place I had to make an adjustment was this uh, tab that sticks out to mount the gun to. In order for me to get it, you know, I wanted to get it halfway into this slot because uh, the outside of the fuselage has the other half of the opening. So I had to cut that back about three millimeters and then I was able to install the gun and line it up and touch it up 
and I'm very happy with that. I just have to go back. I'm going to touch up the, uh, the headrest a little bit to make sure it's the way I want. And I still have to install the belts on the back seat. I haven't done that yet. Uh, the backrest goes from here to here. Uh, HGW gives you the backrest as well. So I've got all that good to go. I'm going to do that in the morning when I'm <laughs> better prepared for it. The last thing I did on here was there's a, uh, a mount to hold uh, MG17 magazines and it, it connects down here to a tab in the bottom back of the cockpit and then it comes up and meets uh, this tab here on the back. So what I'm going to do is, the only thing I got to do here is I got to touch up that RLM2. It looks a little faded there from, you know, moving it around. Everything else I'm very satisfied with. I'm very happy with the look of this. This kit is a well-engineered kit. Uh, it's a real break from the crap I've been working on lately. So basic assembly is done. I think we're ready for primer. First, let me say this is probably one of Ravel's better engineered kits. I'm pretty happy with it. So let me tell you what I've done here. I got, obviously we did the cockpit. Uh, I had zero problems assembling the cockpit. So I was happy with that. Um, once I had all that together, we, we, we assembled the fuselage. We got that together. Uh, the 
biggest pain in the ass with this kit is the separate uh, sections of uh, clear for the uh, the sliding canopy and the windscreen. I had really hoped that I could uh, use the the plane as a jig to glue these three clear pieces together, remove it, and paint it off the plane. But that was not to be. I couldn't get these three pieces together to save myself. I eventually had to break down and, and install them on the plane so I could get that done. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape this off so that I can paint the outside without getting anything on the inside. The uh, fuselage went together very well. The only place I had to use putty was down here. Uh, you can see the gray right there. And I used some uh, here and here. Other than that, it went together well. The barrel here for the machine gun is from Master. And I, I painted it and then I realized, well, I gotta paint the plane, so it's gonna get covered anyway. So what I'll do at the end is I'll go back and, and repaint it. Uh, everything else here, as you see, went together just fine. Uh, didn't really fight me very much. That's done. Let me set that aside. It'll be ready for primer soon. I did the engine. Uh, the engine is, is you know, considering, uh, you know, it's right out of the box. Uh, it's very nice. I'm very happy with it. So once I had the engine assembled, it, I dry fit it into the, uh, onto the fuselage. There's two tabs here in the, in the exhaust pipes that fit into the fuselage. Uh, looks like it should fit just right. So no problems there. The, the floats. All right. I was trying to figure out the best way to do this, and to my reckoning, uh, the best thing for me to do was to build the plane and build the float separately as two separate assemblies uh, that can be connected later on. I used the I used this stand that they give you as a jig to get everything lined up. Uh, I glued these in. The black you see, I'm using this uh, Mr. Cement SP black. So that's the black stains you see everywhere. Uh, I highly recommend that too for stuff like this where everything is monotone and it lets you see what you're doing. So I, these are not, the floats aren't glued to the stand. I'm just using it as a jig. That's why they're taped down. Uh, this is obviously gonna need adjusting as, as we go on. Once I go to install the plane onto the floats, then you'll see we have to you're going to have to play with this a little bit to get everything to line up. and uh, But it will. It, it kind of does already without me trying. So I'm not worried about that. And then the last thing here that I will complain about is what's a good model without something to complain about. Again, it's the, the transparencies. Now, this is fairly delicate. It's three pieces separate that you have to glue together and not, you know, get glue stains all over if you can help it. So what I did was, let me go in order. I built this first. This is the back canopy that's fixed. And then I installed it. So, and then I used that to give me the right shape for the, the canopy. So we got that done again. Uh, what a pain in the ass, but I've masked off. I use the Montex mask like a paint uh, mask off the inside and the outside I'm gonna paint the inside on this and install it before I paint the plane so that it'll help me to mask off the, the cockpit uh, You'll notice here that it's masking tape. Well, it's Tamiya tape on the top and on the inside of the top instead of the Montex uh, instead of the Montex masks because the, the vinyl didn't want to flex around the curve of the canopy. So it was easier to just use the uh, paper that the masks came on as a jig to cut out the right size masks to, to do that. Same thing here. Uh, I'm going to do uh, basic paint on the, uh, on the floats. For better or worse, my plan is I'm going to try to use some hairspray chipping around the fronts uh, to chip the paint where the water would make contact with it every time the water hits when it lands. Uh, and then weathering and stuff will come later when it's all attached. So 
that's where we're gonna leave this for today. Uh, next time we get together, you'll see the uh, plane and primer. We'll start working on uh, a paint plan. I've got masks for the markings. This will be the first time I'm using uh, paint masks to do uh, national markings and stuff. So uh, thank you again for stopping in. Uh, thank you to the over 730 people who have subscribed. I can't thank you enough. And I uh, hope you all stay well. And, uh, oh, and uh, rather than start changing the camera to tell you this, uh, my Facebook page is back up. Mr. G's Workbench, just look for it uh, on Facebook if you're so inclined. Let me know what you think of it. If you don't like it, by all means, let me know. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this plane. If you've built this plane, I'd love to see how yours came out. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon. So take care and be well.